Hello and welcome to uh, Love Rugby League Weekly um, in association with Betfred, our sponsor. My name's Dave Parkinson alongside Mr. Drew Derbyshire and again we've got a different location. So uh, this is in uh, Chez Dave. I think we can call it that, can't we? Well, we're in the glorious studio of... Uh... <laughs> Of Parkinson Limited. <laughs> Park is that, is that what it's going to be called? Parkinson Limited. Uh, <laughs> in the depths of uh, of Lee, I've got memories of this place, Dave, from when when we worked at Lee's Centurions together. Uh, quite a few years ago, now. Uh, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't have been in this one though, because this one it wasn't built. <laughs> it was a, it was a different studio. A different studio. Different studio. Anyway, we're here. We're delighted to uh, be here. Glad that you can join us as well. Um, we want to hear all your thoughts uh, but we're going to be talking about several topics really we're going to start off with um, some championship news some league one news then we're going to continue with our super league preview we've given ourselves a bit of a rod for our own back here haven't we because all of a sudden we've got five teams to preview this week we do but it's because we missed one out last week weren't it Dave? Uh, thankfully though Thankfully, though, um, what we do have is um, some news from those clubs, so it sort of mixes in as well, so that's great. Um, I was going to introduce this show originally, because I was thinking it would have been like yourself and yourself and James, yeah. as me working with the Max and Paddy of Rugby League, but I don't who's know. Who's the Max and who's the Paddy? I'm, I don't I'm know. The tall, I'm the taller one, so I, I should be Paddy, really, but I think I'm more of a Max. And You're a bit more of a more Max? Of a more of a paddy. I think that's what it is, Dave. Uh, I, I don't know what I call myself, but I'm sure other people would think of a, a description, so that's all might, right. Might rhyme with banker. <laughs> Something like that, Dave. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Only joking. That Lee Banker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so, um, one thing... Do we want to give a plug to a few things that are happening on the site? Because it's been a busy old week, hasn't it? And everything's setting up and getting ready for Super League. It's, it's been an exit week, uh, the first thing that we, we've probably got to mention is the Fantasy League is finally up and running uh, after a long, long, long couple of months uh, trying to sort it out. We've been working on our website over the last probably six months to a year now, and uh, it's it's been a long slog there. But uh, Lucy, the the admin um, lady in the office, it, she's been working tirelessly to to get all the the figures for the players done and all the players transfers to different teams. And we think it's there now and, and people can sign up. We've had over 200 entrants already and it, it only went live just over 24 hours ago. So, um, yeah, bit big up to, to Fantasy League. There's a lot of other stuff um, on site as well, what, what people will love to read. Jamie Jones Buchanan, we've got a massive sit-down with him. It's a great um, interview, that. It's a fantastic interview. It's one of, it is one of the best reads uh, you, you'll read all year because... Uh, the the character just uh, of Jamie Jones Buchanan just comes through on on the article. It, it's fantastic. The game will certainly miss um, people like him when he retires. Uh, a good interview by uh, Rob Conlon, who also uh, is a, a Planet Sport colleague. There's loads of other stuff on site, Dave. I can't even think. There's off the record. There's paper talk. And all, there's also all two the podcasts usual, as well. Uh, we've done stuff. a we've the, done the a double final edition. Lucid podcast. We're back. The, the first and the second yep. of, of 2019. They're on you and Adrian Jackson uh, do your usual stuff, Dave. You've got plenty of exclusive interviews on there. No more so than John Wilkin, Lee Mitchell, Dion Cross. There's, there's so many. Jason Mossop, that's a, a good feature as well. Uh, so we've got, we've got loads of stuff on site and we've got uh, plenty of previews. I think we've got a couple more to go out today and tomorrow. We've got all the stuff building up to the Saints Wigan Derby. We've got a couple of promo videos going out as well on the whole Derby, the Wigan Saints Derby. Um, so it's it's been a busy old week uh, for for Love Rugby League Dev, but we're certainly uh, glad that the season's back. Now you might be wondering because you'll be you'll be reading Drew's at, and I mean I can assure you it's not as cold in here as he thinks it is. So because this heating's been well, on for I, ages. I thought uh, from my experiences <laughs> in the parks and studios, it's it's always been. Um, uh, a very, very <laughs> cold and, and bitter morning in Lee, I tell you that, Dave. But you, you've had the heaters on, and I'm actually sweating now, but I've got to get a bit of Brandon in there for, for Love Rugby League, and yeah. thanks to Kappa for, for the gear. But we do have to apologise, because the only way that I could get this running so as it wasn't pulsing uh, is 
having it where we've got the reverse camera on us, so everything's a bit back to front. So I, I apologise for that, but I'm sure you can live with it, can't you? Just we've, we've not it, we've not got the stitching wrong. It is the right way around. <laughs> it is the right way around. <laughs> right, let's crack on, shall we? So first of all, let's start with the championship. And interesting to see that Josh Johnson's got himself lined up. He's gone and signed with Barrow. That's a great signing for Barrow. He's put together a really good squad ahead of the season. A very impressive uh, signing for, for Barrow, Dave. And, and they've got a, a very good pack as well ahead of the new season. I've, I've tipped Barrow to, to finish uh, the higher of the, the part-time teams in the championship ahead of the, the 2019 season. What, Johnson. even ahead of like, Halifax and Featherston? Oh, oh yeah, for Halifax is part-time. They're the only part-time team. Uh, Oh yeah, further part time. To be fair, yeah, I've I've come out with a little fib there, Dave. There's quite a few teams before <laughs> him. Though. Sorry, um, man, but but uh, yeah, uh, I've, I've, they're not in the bottom four, I don't think. But mm -hmm. they might they might change again on my predictions on LoverBleed.com <laughs> in a couple of hours' time, Dave. Johnson, a fantastic signing. Seeing a bit of him at, at Leeds last season when he when he went on loan there. A solid signing. It brings plenty of aggression. Might pick up a, a few cards, but that's the type of player he is. He's aggressive, and he'll, he'll certainly bolster Barrow's pack. I like those type of players, yeah. though, that they play on the edge. I mean, I, I Gaz love, Hot was yeah, always the, a guy that I, I love watching yeah, play. Love, love the likes of Gaz Hock. Even Ryan Bailey as well. Um, I love them type of players. And, and every I think every team needs a player or two like that they, they need that aggression we've also got some loan moves to tell you about as well Callum Turner the young fullback from Castleford has gone on loan to Featherstone Rovers Feather have also been in the market as well so uh, can we call them the uh, Featherstone Lone Rovers because <laughs> they've uh, they've added Daniel Smith as well haven't they from Huddersfield they have two very impressive loan signings I've yeah, seen a I bit of so, yeah. Callum Turner last season at uh, Cass I think it was Cass v Warrington at the Alabama Joel Stadium. He got in right and, at the uh, back end, didn't he? He did. He did. Uh, I think it was a late call, call up for for Callum Turner, but he stepped up brilliantly and he took on the the kicking duties as well. He's a really impressive fullback, a good signing for Featherstone, and, and they have made a, de a few decent signings as well. Obviously, Cam King from the NRL, who's a, who's a good player on his day. Uh, Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith uh, for me. He needs, he's, a, he's a 13 for me rather than a, a front rower. And it's the same job these days, row. isn't it? Well, I, I like the traditional 13s, Dave. He's we, not a traditional 13, though. I think, I, think he's, I, think, I think he's more than just a... Just a um, he's a bash and bad grump yeah, player for me. I th no, I, I think he's more than that. I do. I think he's a loose forward. But then that role is er eroded, hasn't it? I think he's an old loose forward. I think, I, honestly, I think he could do. We'll be getting games. the Orvis music I, in the I, background in a minute. <laughs> I think he could, uh, he, he could play a full game, Dan Smith. Well, he's probably, he's probably going to have to, to be honest, with the reduced <laughs> interchanges this year. I mean, we're down from ten to eight, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Have they, have they got the the dual edge with Leeds uh, this year? I assume they have. Mm, well, I've not seen anything, I but I, I don't think it's been announced that it's been crossed off at all. Yeah, I'd, I'd assume it, it'll go ahead. Um. Let me just have a look on here. Uh, what other thing? Just Lewis by Beaver. the way, if, if you've got any questions for me and Dave to go through, just fire away. Obviously, we, rugby league related. We don't. We will fit them in. If, if you want to know what I have for dinner, I have meatballs. But you've been IKEA on the way through. Is that where it's? Oh, I'm not. No, I, I make my own meatballs there. Really? Bit of pasta. You, you're more talented than I give you Bit credit for. Bit of broccoli. For. And to think, I thought you was just a mere pie eater. <laughs> Uh, yes, so Lewis Beanek as well. He's uh, left Hull temporarily to go over to Batley. Um, big, big figure. Uh, was quite impressive when I first saw him hit London Broncos first team. Yeah, it's still very, very early stages, mm. though, isn't it, for for Lewis in his career? I don't, I don't think he he would have been starting for for Hull FC this year or getting in the, the seventeen man squad. I think he would have been a more of a sporadic player. He's certainly a project for for Lee Radford's side, and and he's certainly got the capabilities of playing in Super League at the highest level. He, as you said, Dave, he's, he's a massive figure, uh, but I think he just needs that regular bit more game time obviously mm -hmm. he was good at London and that's where he was obviously spotted uh, played for Ireland as well in the Autumn Internationals so he's a, he's a good player but he just needs that bit of game time and that, that bit of roughness in him I okay um, one player that does have plenty of game time under his belt but has gone in search of uh, yet more Luke Douglas mm. moved from St Helens to Lee on loan I think that's a really interesting signing and what does that say more about St Helens than it does about Lee picking him up uh, well, I've, I think it shows that St. Helens' packs 
uh, formidable uh, this season. Obviously, they've got Alex Wormsley, the England front row, coming back from injury. He'll be like a new signing because obviously he didn't, he didn't <laughs> feature much last year after. Was it, was it breaking his neck or fracturing his neck or something? It was a really line. bad injury, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was. It, it, it could have touch, finished him. Yeah, it was touch and go for his career, but he's, he's obviously returned. Yeah, he did the, the, the pre match press conference the other day and he looked in real good shape. Um, so I think he'll be a, a fantastic player. Him and Luke Thompson starting front rows, wowzers. Wigan could be. Uh, <laughs> Could have a could have a big task on the runs tonight, but I think Luke Tom uh, Luke Douglas, sorry, uh, going to Lee. I think he's a fantastic signing for Lee. That mm. I think um, I I personally would have believed that no disrespect to Lee, but he would have gone to a Super League side if he was to go out on loan, uh, just because of his quality. Uh, he's he's just a traditional front rower, isn't he? he takes it hard and hard and straight. Uh, doesn't leave no stone unturned, um, and I think he'll he'll do the Centurions a very very good job. Okay, uh, just two other little stories from the Championship to tell you about. Bradford have partnered with a local radio yep. station, Pulse 2, to give extra game coverage, which is always a good thing. Uh, and I love this story from Dewsbury as well. They've got a Join the Rampage initiative, which is basically offering a free training session to local rugby league junior teams. So they're getting them down Very good, yeah. to the Tetley Stadium. Yeah. Um, and they're able to use like the wrestle room that they've just had done there, see the other facilities, use them, and and get um, and get some, you know, professional training from some of the Dewsbury Rams boys. I think that's a really, really good thing. That. Yeah, I think it is, and it's it's always good to see it when they partner with with the community game and they try and get youngsters involved. That's what we need in rugby league now, Dave, because uh, the the thing is is that. It, the, the sports declining in participation levels, especially at, like the the amateur side and the junior side. Obviously, I grew up uh, playing at Goulburn Parkside Junior Club, and uh, oh, the, so it's no wonder you give me daggers last week when I mentioned Lee Miners Rangers. Uh, <laughs> I thought the, it was Lee Miners Rangers. You I, I also played a bit at Lee Miners Rangers, but the, the, I spent most of my junior career at uh, Goulburn Parkside, Dave. And uh, I take it back, uh, folks. Uh, uh, well, at one stage, they had they had um, teams at every every age. Um, and and they don't have an open edge anymore, I don't think. And it's it's only under sevens, under nines, under twelves, and, and there's a mm. couple missing it at, at teenage level. So it's it's quite alarming, really, Dave. So it's it's great to see that the the community game is is getting back involved and and people go actually going out of their own their own way to to do that. I'll just do these couple of League One uh, bits and then we'll look at your comments that are coming through because I noticed there's quite a few that people are posting, isn't there? So. Uh, Doncaster, they recently had an army training camp at Catterick. Now, I know that's something that Super League clubs have done a lot of in the past, isn't it? What, what was that, Dave? Sorry, I'm, <laughs> Don- <laughs> I'm reading the comments here. Can we just go through uh, a couple of comments, Dave? There's well, hang on, hang on. Let go me on. do these quick. All right, go on, go on, go on, go on. So, Doncaster have had a training camp at Catterick Army mm-hmm. Camp, which I know Super League yeah, clubs yeah, have oh used yeah, that. Yeah, at yeah. Wigan's used it, Leeds have used it in the past London as well. Broncos have also done it this uh, pre-season. Yeah. And also, as well, interesting, we didn't really mention Hunslet at all. Now, they've put some interesting signings together. Their skipper, Dwayne Strafford, wants a top two finish. He thinks anything outside a top two finish will be a poor season. What do you think on that one, Dave? I think he's setting himself up for a fall, to be honest, because, you know, the two Cumbrian clubs have strengthened. You look at Oldham as well, uh, probably favourites in that division. Um I like what Hunslet are doing, though. I like the coach there, Gary Thornton. He's mm. a, a real good bloke. He's been Newcastle around the game for a long while. Well. Yeah, we've not even mentioned Newcastle there. Who, who've spent bucket loads, haven't they? Obviously, obviously, there's a lot of focus on the championship this year, and there was last year, uh, about it being the most competitive yet. And I think if you look at League One, it's it's very, very competitive. Uh, you, you can't really call it who's, who'll, get, who'll probably get promoted. Uh, can you really? There's, no. there's the likes of Oldham. There's Newcastle, the the two up there for me, but then the Cumbrians, like you say, Dave, yeah, and it's all <laughs> we both know from media duties, it's always a tough trip up to up to Cumbria, never Very mind not. playing. Uh, so lovely people though. I've yeah. got a bit of Cumbrian love going on at the moment. I think. You have, I have. You know, it's uh, it's been on tour with them in uh, Fiji. I think you have twelve. 12 Cumbrians. Anyway, um, my final story from League One before we look at some of these comments which are coming through and give you a few mentions. Uh, West Wales, they've re-signed the outside back Brad Kinslingbury, who was, um, I think he was with them early last season. I think he's also played at Gloucester for all goals. Um, but they've also released a headache-inducing new first-team kit. It's horrible, it's grey, 
and it's like lime green, isn't it? Yeah. Light yeah. lime green. I've, I've never been a fan of grey kits, Dave. In any sport whatsoever, grey kits are horrible. It's, it's, worse, it's worse when they got white numbers on the back as well, which they had <laughs> a couple of years the, ago. The, the short, or honestly, the grey kits should not be a thing. They're absolutely disgusting. Is it, is it Warrington who's got the, the grey away kit this year? It, it is, They've got it, like kind a, of like a khaki kit, haven't they? Yeah. Like a lime green. Well, it's no grey kits are a, are a no go. They they look they look horrible. What? Who wants to wear a grey kit? But then again, are they decent with black uh, black jeans though? <laughs> if you're wearing them, <laughs> for a good night club in there, not going playing rugby. Listen, do you know how long it was since I've last been <laughs> night clubbing? <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 not a nice kit. It's a bit of a shocker. Mm, mm. Okay, so I'll t- tell you the the kits I do like, Dave Coventry. Oh, that's smart. Both home Both, and away. Yeah, home and away. Very, very smart by the birds. You were saying the Lee away one made you vomit. Oh yeah, I'm not not keen. It looks I like, like it's ma- it looks like it's made on that like, PowerPoint, Dave, with graphic on that, and it fades in and fades out in the middle. Oh, but it was all done in the early nineties, that with football kits, wasn't it? Everybody had a fade going on. Oh, so they've just n- not not developed the software then for. That make it kits since nineties. Are, are you calling a kit maker? <laughs> <laughs> no, if you want to send us some free gear. <laughs> if, if, we, if we want to call we a kit maker though, how about ISC? They're so lazy. Yeah. I mean, they've got they have in the last eighteen months they've had three teams wearing the same yeah. kit. Yeah, I think look at the Toronto one. Uh, I think it's important not to not to badge your uh, manufacturers here, Dave. Uh, they yeah, might, they I, might, I they think might so. end up sending us some some orders over us some in future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, well, we'll have anything. <laughs> and and I'll tell you what. That that uh, that West Wales kit, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> right, what people saying? It's to going us. to be interesting to see what West Wales do. Uh, James Gordon, the the founder and editor, saying, "Looking smart, Drew." Hashtag branded. Is that a Wigan scarf, Dave? Uh, uh, no, it's it Dave's ta- scarf. He's he's supporting w- Wigan tonight. Is Dave? I wouldn't have let it in the in the building had it been a Wigan scarf. No, it's a Love Rugby League scarf. This one. It is a Love Rugby League scarf. <laughs> Ka- Kath Stott. Oh yeah, for, we said we'd, for you, Dave. we we missed saying hello to Kath uh, in our last edition when we were uh, trying to be heard over the noise in the room oh, yeah, at, uh, yeah, yeah. at Old Trafford. So, so hi, hi than last time, chaps. Oh, thank goodness for that. So and we don't we don't sound like we're in like a tin can or something. To anymore. be fair, I mean, I spent about forty five minutes getting all this sound stuff ready, so I was hoping that it'll work a bit better this time round. Um, Stephen Taylor doing it with Betfred this year. Can't trust you, man. Why can't you trust us? What? Eh? You can trust it. You can look at that face. That's the most trustworthy face in rugby league. Is that? There you go. Can you click that, Dave? I'm going. I'm going to pin that to me. My tweets on on my profile. The most trusted man in rugby league. Do you want? That's do you, fantastic, that Dave. Do you want it repeating? This is the I'd, most trustworthy man in rugby league. That's going headline on my CV. That. <laughs> <laughs> so says Dave Parkinson. Who knows now? <laughs> uh, J- James Furbank says, "Are you both um, drunk?" I replace it <laughs> with the word. Hey, we're not drunk. We're just happy. Right. We're, we're riding the crest of the, the season. The season's back. We might be high on caffeine because I've had a few brews this morning, but uh, we're not drunk. Um, Michael Martin, I lads, sorry, I'm I'm late. Uh, doing some uh, baking for the wife. I nearly said packing for the wife. Packing. I was, was going to say, what's what's happened there, Michael? <laughs> hey, um, what what are you baking? Doing some baking. Let us know what you bake. Send us some over if you want. He's from Hull, though. It might be a bit crushed by the time it gets to us. It might be, yeah. Uh, Fred Parkinson, uh, your your um, dad, Dev. Now your shed is tidy. You can start on your own way. So. <laughs> <laughs> Superb. Um, so yeah, Dev. They're, they're the comments what we're getting. In. If you want us to answer any questions, any rugby, rugby league related questions, uh, just send them in. We're talking everything about salary cap, about Super League. We've talked about championship. We're going to be talking much, much more. Get your questions in. And me and Dave, we'll do our very best, won't we, to to answer them? Yeah, yeah. The next place that I want to go is the uh, Coral Challenge Cup. Uh, We had round one at the weekend. I gave a big uh, mention to it at the end of our show last week. And there were some great results. I mean, there's a couple of standouts there for me. Rochdale Mayfield going up to Kells and coming back with a victory, 14 points to four. Also, uh, Lee Miners Rangers beating Ulton Raiders, 22 points to 10. Uh, Wigan St. Patrick's just getting through, thanks to a great second half against Lee East by 24 points to 12. And uh, Haydock knocking out Shawcross Sharks. Uh, I know you were keeping your eye on a couple of games as well. I mean, uh, what did you make of the Red Star Belgrade performance up at Millen? 
Yeah, right, I watched the the Red Star game. Um, it was a, we didn't really know what to expect, did we, from Red Star before no. the game? Because we we didn't know if it, if they were going to blow Millam away or or if it, if they were going to get pumped. Obviously, the scoreline does look a bit like it was a, an easy ride for for Millen, but it, it certainly wasn't. Not in not in the first half. I think uh, Red Star gave it a good go. Obviously, the quality is a little bit uh, lower than what probably I originally anticipated, but I probably um, over over uh, egged them, if you like. Um, but it's good to see so many Serbians in, involved in the game because uh, I think there was only two American in, uh, American internationals. And an English player on the the entire team. Was there an Australian as well? The oh, Australian, the Australian yeah, yeah. And uh, see, even they've got Australian halfbacks. <laughs> apart from that, um, yeah, it was it was full Serbian. It, it was good to see. It, it, it were and and it seems like they were they were accepted fully and, and well at, at Millham as well. Uh, interesting video that's appeared on the uh, Love Rugby League YouTube channel over this last few hours as well, involving. Was it Normanton Knights and Edinburgh Eagles? Mm. Uh, yeah. Seb's done a, a great video yeah. where he's recapped all that happened in that game, and it's they like didn't have little, it all their own way. Yeah, yeah we've got they? we've got like a little highlight show, haven't we? With the the Edinburgh Normanton game. Um, Edinburgh, uh, probably one of the all, the, probably the fam most famous Scottish club, aren't they? In, in in rugby league, obviously a few have departed in recent years, which is another another sad uh, thing. Dave, I think it was that Aberdeen Warriors mm. um, that were, were actually the Scottish champions, and, and they've gone under as well. So it's it is very sad. Um, but Edinburgh, they gave it a, a very good go. Uh, I, I suggest that you you check the video out if if you can because it's a, a good highlights package and. It's good to see Scotland involved in the game because not a lot, not a lot of people think uh, Scotland being involved with the rugby league, but mm. but there is, and it, it is going though. Okay, um, one other result that really stood out for me was the fact that Hunslet Club Parkside, who went unbeaten all last season, they lost out to Thornhill Trojans. Mm. I mean, that's a, a very yeah a very really surprise. good result yeah, for Thornhill. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're a great side Thornhill as well, to be fair. Oh no, no, they are. But I, I fully expected Hunslet Parkside to to beat them, especially after how they played in in the Yorkshire Cup because they did themselves proud in the in the Yorkshire Cup in pre-season. So I thought Hunslet oh, Parkside will be one of the the amateur clubs or the community clubs, if you like, to 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 maybe make it through to the later rounds and maybe get a League One or a Champ club. Mm -hmm. um, I really thought that, but a fantastic result for, for uh, Thornhill Trojans. Um, that. All led to all roads led to Wigan St Patrick's, didn't they, for the draw? Um, I wasn't able to get along. Did you manage to get along? No, I, I didn't go. Um, I watched the the stream on on BBC Sport uh, website. George Williams and Mickey Iron making the draw. And uh, these are the games which they picked out. So Underbank Rangers at home to Featherstone Lions. The British Police travel over to Wigan St Pat's. Rochdale Mayfield are on the road again, rewarded with a tie away at Thornhill Trojans. They're not doing it easy, are they? And uh, Thato Heath Crusaders take on Lee Miners Rangers in what, for me, is the pick of the round. Mm. Uh, yeah. Ovenden take on West Bowling. Haydock travel over to Normanton Knights. Again, that's a tough ask for Haydock, yeah, isn't it? Tough ask. West Hull at home to Bentley. Milford Marlins at home to Lock Lane, which should also be a cracking game. That's like Leeds and Cass revisited that. Uh, Wathbrow Hornets at home to York Acorn. Wigan St. Jude's travelling over to Driglington. Siddle on the road to Millham, which again is a really interesting tie. Dissington from Cumbria at home to the RAF. And East Leeds at home to Dewsbury Moor. Yeah, I think I think uh, the pick of the bunch is, is the Miners game, Dave. So again, I would anticipate there's going to be two games of that show, and one on the Our League app yeah. and one on the BBC streaming service. So uh, do look out for the announcement that's going to be coming the RAF with that. Could be, could be on the BBC, possibly. Well, I mean, they were flying. They beat North Hearts Crusaders. You were waiting for See, me to quote something oh, like that, weren't you? See what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, let us move over to Super League. Yeah. Uh, have we Go got any it. more comments? So. No, Michael's a must keep happy, but tell, tell us what you, you're baking, Michael. Make us hungry. And if you're mentioning pies, it's really going to get Drew going. I'm telling you. I've got sweet tooth as well. So oh, oh, it might be some furry cakes. Is that what you're hoping that he's built? I'm not a clue. <laughs> I don't know how talented he is. It might be furry cakes or it might be like a gato or something there. Could be, could be. 
Uh, we already mentioned St. Helens a little bit earlier, uh, but again, yeah. you look at the squad that they have put together, the likes of Naguam and Lachlan Coots coming in, they're surely going to be better than last season, aren't they? Oh, for sure. And, and Alex Wormley as well returning, because Alex Wormley it's a new signing, didn't, yeah. didn't feature last season. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's one of the best front rowers, if not the best front rower uh, in the comp on, on his day. Obviously, he's got a, a probably uh, a little rivalry with Luke Thompson for the best front rower in the comp. But uh, since his back line, Dave, Lachlan Coote, um, Regan Grace, Tommy Maginson on the wings, and then you've got Kevin Nagama uh, in the centre with uh, Mark Percival. That's that's an impressive back line. And how good is it that... What, what I'm interested to see, Dave, about yeah. Saints this season is that Justin Albrook has put a, a lot of emphasis in pre-season... Um, on Lachlan Coote's left footed kicking game. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how. It's unusual for a left footed, left -footed kicker, kicker, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We, we don't see it, do we? We don't see very many is of it them, no. Only Danny Brough, I can think of, in Super League. He, he can kick off both feet as well, can't he? Uh, Max Need as well, I think he's left footed. Only two, though. So, so it's going to be interesting because it, cause obviously they've got options then. So they've got a right footed one and a left footed one. So, or but he, he has put a lot of emphasis on Coote's kicking game and his short kicking game as well near the try line. So. Uh, how do you think Richardson's going to go on this year? Because it's almost like second season syndrome for him now, isn't it? He it's sort of burst onto the scene, was really, really consistent last year, deserved his call up to the England Knights squad. Um, do you think he'll find that same level of consistency? Um, it's going to be a massive season for him. It is. It, it's a huge season for Danny Richardson. I think for him, it's just got to be about having the same year as he did last season. I don't think he's got to be better than he was last season. I, don't, I think it's about maintaining that consistency. How many times, Dave, have we seen it before where a young player bursts on the scene and then they just fade away and then they fade away and then they fade away and then they end up in, just in, in the championship or something like that or, or playing reserve grade rugby or, or something like that. So it's a massive season uh, for Danny Richardson. I think it'll help him having more experience under his belt from last term. But I think he... He's fantastic in attack, there's no doubt about that. He's got a good step, he's got a good kicking game, he organises well, but I think it's it's his defensive duties that let him down sometimes a little bit. I think he gets run over mm -hmm. uh, a little bit uh, at times, so I think he needs just to work on his defence a little bit, but uh, his attack, he's second to none, and he loves the big pressure games. He embraces pressure. OK, um, what do you also make as well of... Saints have made two key re-signings over the last few days. Hey, well, they? Liam McNally just said the Wigan Warriors show. We've not, we've not mentioned Wigan, have we, Harley? That's coming up. Drew's going to get his ten. Drew's going to get his ten minutes then. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but as I was saying, they've gone and re-signed two key members of that squad. Getting Makinson on a, uh, on a long-term deal is massive, isn't well, it? Yeah, well, unreal. And and Roby as well. Let's not forget James Roby signed a Well, I was coming up with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Deal. Um, yeah, fantastic news for Makinson, but fantastic news for Super League as well. Golden Boot winner. Uh, I don't. I think if if you don't know who, who uh, Tommy Makinson is now, Dave, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think yeah, you're watching the wrong sport as, as Brad Fittler highlighted. So remember to uh, share this with Freddie Fittler because I don't think he knows. Uh, well, he, he might do now, Dave. He, he was spotted in Newcastle in the off-season, weren't he? Was he? Was he, he, uh, he Tommy Makinson. Do? I, don't, I don't know what he was there for, <laughs> but uh, he was spotted in Newcastle in the off-season. Not, not in the north-east, <laughs> in, in Newcastle in Australia. Oh, um, he was spotted with his old coach, Nathan Brown. Oh, right, OK. Uh, but he's, he's obviously committed to the Saints now, so... Um, it's fantastic news for Saints because he's a fan favourite, isn't he? Mm. I think I think a lot of rugby league fans in general like him as well. Where does that? He is a great bloke. He's a great bloke to interview as well. Where does that re-signing and the fact that Regan Grace is currently progressing? Where does that leave lads like Adam Swift? That's what I'm. I, I'm quite surprised that Adam Swift stayed at Saints because he's a good winger, isn't he? Yes, he yeah. He's a, he is an impressive winger, and I, I'm quite surprised that he stayed at Saints because he, he played a few. I think he played more for Sheffield Eagles on Joe Reg last season, Dave, than he played for Saints. Mm. Um, and I, honestly, it's it's very very surprising. Obviously, he's St. Helens lad, so uh, he'll he'll want to play for his own town and stuff like that. And and I get and I get that. But if he's not playing it, and, and you just travel now to Sheffield, no disrespect to Sheffield, but he's a, he's a solid Super League winger, isn't he? Very is much. It, right, yeah. um, so I I I'm surprised that because it's been like this for what 18 months now, Dave. Mm. And it, and it might be like this for another year. Uh, it, it is quite surprising because I'm a, I'm a big fan of Adam Swift. 
Uh, he put on a lot of size last season, which I think helped him um, being a little bit more of a bulky winger. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it is surprising. Put your wigging hat on. I know that's going to be quite easy for you. I'll upset some people here. Yeah. And upset some people. But, um, you know, wigging up against St. Helens tonight, where do you see their weaknesses? Where do I see the weaknesses? Well, Wigan's weaknesses? No, 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 it's St. Helens. Uh, as, as, a, as a Wigan fan, as a, as a, as a commentator on the game, it's as very, a writer. It's very, it's very tough to pick out a, weak, a weakness for Saints, isn't it? Mm. It is. I was struggling. It I, is. That's why I thought but, I'd achieve, to be but fair. I, but I think with, with Wigan, you, you could... It's, it's got to be down the, the flanks, hasn't it? Okay. But I, I don't think that that's where Saints' weaknesses are. That's just where I think we can, can catch them out. I don't think they're weak by any means. We just speak about the back line there, but we've seen uh, the likes of Tom Davis, who's I'm a big, 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 big fan of. Uh, an unbelievable work rate. Uh, Oliver Gildart, who, who's a, a very skillful, talented player. Right, we're almost crossing into the next the next team, so well, let's move on to him because it seems like quite obvious to do that. Um, OK, so you mentioned a couple of players there who are a, a, a real standout. They've got big holes to fill, though, haven't they, in the in the squad with the guys that they've lost in the close season? I think they have, but I think if you, if you look at what they've brought in as well, they, they've effectively replaced them. I th honestly, a lot of people are talking about, obviously, Sam Tompkins leaving and John Bateman, but I think Ryan Sutton's going to be a massive miss. For I him. would agree with you. Yeah, he's, he was a miss. top, top forward. Him. A really good forward, and I, I think one of the most underrated forwards in the comp. I, I, I find it baffling how... He wasn't selected for England Knights tour of Papua New Guinea because he's certainly young enough. Is he 22, 23? I think so, yeah. Uh, he's still a, a very young forward because obviously forwards only mature um, later on, so he could easily make England's World Cup squad in 2021. Maybe a bit two years in NRL, as it looks out, or even if he comes back. Uh, but I don't, I don't think they've, they've replaced Ryan Sutton. Uh, obviously, they brought Joe Bullock they in. They brought Joe. And have you seen him? He, he, he has, has changed his physique he totally. Has, he has. He has. But he's still, he's still kept his pace. He used, obviously used to be a winger. Now he's a front rower. But apparently, he's kept his pace. He's He's been winning the um, the 40 metre sprints in, in Wigan's uh, pre season. Oh, he's training. quick over 30, 40 metres. Um, he's, he's, he's Joe. Yeah. So, so it's going to be interesting to see how he's played this year. Because I thought he would have brought, been brought in as a project. We maybe got five or ten games and then build on that and, and keep building. But we've seen with the likes of Gabe Hamlin and Roman Navarrete over the last couple of seasons. Willie Isaac came in as a project player. We've seen with the, with those guys. The, a the project player out. at 29 years old, Willie Isaac. Well, no, he was younger than that when he came to Wigan. When he's been at Wigan a couple of years now. Yeah, but originally he started off at wing as well. He was horrible as a winger. <laughs> he did, could never yeah. score, could he? No. It's no it, wonder yes. he ended up moving inside. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think I think he's much more suited as a back row, though, to be fair. I don't think he's a centre either. I think he's an out-and-out back row, but it's going to be interesting to see how we can do. We've not mentioned Zach Hardick yet. A lot of people... I was hoping not to A mention lot of people him, probably uh, be, be more than a few people are mentioning the salary cap. We will come on to the salary cap in, it, in that a little while. That was going to be my next question um, to him, to be fair. Uh, so, yeah, Zach Hardick are coming in, and Jared Sammer. Uh First of all, Zach Hardick, I think... He's a very good tip for 2019 Man of Steel if he can keep his off-field issues all right. We all know. You that say if I mean a leopard can't it, yep. change his spots, can he? He's on. He's he's got to be drinking at the last chance saloon now. He's had last chances at Cats, last chances at Leeds. Oh, we, we're gonna he some, didn't succeed in the NRL either. We we're gonna we yeah, but he was only in the NRL for what six months, Dave, something like that. He weren't even in for a full season. He still he, came, maybe. still came back though, didn't he? Yeah, but. He, only six month period. I think it's hard for him to. I I, I think consciously we talk too much about Zach Hardacre. No, I don't. He's got to he's got to prove himself all over again. So let's yeah, but what, we not shouldn't ignore him because he, he, he was by far Castleford's best player in the in the in the 2017 season. Uh, in, well, him and Luke Gale were, were absolute standouts. The the reason Castleford didn't win the grand final is because because they, they had no Zach Hardacre. If they had Zach Hardacre, they would have won it in my opinion. Um, a, a massively influential player, uh, a strike player as well. Um, I, I, I think I think Betfred placed him at like twenty to one odds for yeah. a Man of Steel, and I think I think that's a decent tip to be fair. I think we're still talking too much about him, but um, tell me it's about the main some story of these. Though, isn't it? What, you, what 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 would you expect to be on the front of pair of like the trade papers? Zach Hardacre making his first appearance in sixteen months. Or like a testimonial game. 
I would soon. I would. I would love it to be with the testimonial guy because no, he's at least shown the efforts, hasn't he? Yeah, but it, I, know, I know what you're saying. And I no, we, t- we talk too guys, much. We talk too. No, I'm sure don't. people will agree with me here. What do you reckon? Is everybody talking too much about this Zach Hardy? This is what people want to know, Dave. I, I guarantee League Express and League Weekly when they had. But they've had their say. You know, we're, we're sort of a, we're three or four weeks after the event that since he's come back. Yeah. Yeah, for me, he's still got to prove himself, and he's got to prove himself yeah, all but he's, over He's earned a massive move to you know, like one of the biggest clubs in Super League. And if he's, he, he's, over, he's, of course, going to be talked about. And if he falls foul again, then he should yeah, be well, just caught in the championship. Uh, well, uh, yeah, Aaron Wigan have said that this is his, his final chance. So it's going to be interesting. It is going to be interesting. But I'm going to move on because I'm going to go salary cap. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll move on to the salary cap. But if, if you've been... Hidden under a rock for the last 24 hours. <laughs> We're going to be de- deducted um, two points for the 2019 season for salary cap breaches dating back to 2017 um, when the Warriors finished sixth, I believe, and they didn't make the playoffs. I think it was um, si- it was six payments that have been, six been payments, said, isn't it? Total, uh, they've been fined five thousand pound. Half of it suspended, and it was the six payments totaling up to a cost of around fourteen thousand seven hundred. I think yeah. it were. Um, so they've been. Are they not serial offenders, though? Is this why they've? Well, they are, points? aren't they? They're, 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 this is the third time in the Super League era um, that they've been. They're at the Zakadaker <laughs> bar, aren't they? <laughs> but they've been they, they, they've been done for. For this, it, should they have more severe punishments? It's a difficult one. Probably, you can see both sides of the story, can't you, Dave? Because a lot of people say it's biased, but oh, it was was it under like point eight percent over? You're still over it. Yeah, sure, yeah, surely, yeah, surely there's things but when, in But when no, people no. are saying it's more severe. Surely there's things in place, though, where you can go and you can say to the rugby league or whoever mm. th- does the salary cap, listen, it looks like we could be a little bit over here. I'm sure with that, if they'd gone to in, and said, look, this is what's happening, can we apply for a bit of dispensation here? I'm sure they would have granted it, but because they've not filled X form in or done whatever, they've then had to yeah. serve a punishment, well, haven't they? Yeah, the, the Wigan chairman Ian Lennigan has said that it was an administrative, administrative error because they had a new finance company taking over or something like that. Um, it's they, 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 they've said they're going to appeal, um, mm-hmm. so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there, whether um, the appeal's successful or not. We we won't know just yet. Um, should it be more severe you can see two sides of the story on the flip side you can say like you said Dave um, about applying for dispensation and stuff like that uh, through the season but what I want to know is why are we shooting ourselves in foot Dave what do you mean why are we shooting it's ourselves on the, on, the R- on the RFL statement it said this meeting took place last Thursday so why is it why has it been released the day before the opening game of the season I don't know. Have you asked anybody? Should, that it, should it not have been released last Friday, like the the, the morning after it had oh, been? Oh, that would have been ruining the new beginnings. That well, it all, didn't uh, not already get like can the new beginnings thing because of the the Castleford story was released the, the night before the season launch. Another another time we've shot ourselves in the foot. It's, it, it's honestly. But, but if, if clubs are falling foul though, then surely you do have to you do have to but, report. Oh, hundred percent. I'm not. I'm not saying that. Uh, let's not report it. I'm just saying. Why has it come out the, the, the literally the, di- the day before the season when the meeting and it was confirmed that it had been ducted, deducted two points five days ago? Now, the cynical may suggest that obviously we've got, we've got, two, oh, we've got, we've got two factions in Rugby League, haven't we? We've got the Super League who's now in charge of all the marketing, etc., yeah. etc., et of the top division. Um, and we've got the Rugby League, which is still in charge of governance. Is yeah. this the Rugby League saying, hey... We're still in charge here. Well, it might be, but it's... That's a cynical... It's, that's a cynical yeah, view. but it's, it's very petty, isn't it, Dev? Um, I, I was quite annoyed, to be fair. Obviously, you've got national newspapers who have got these fine, feel-good stories uh, going out before the start of the season, yet they've been pulled because, uh, obviously, the salary cap issue takes toll. And I'm not saying... I'm not saying let's not report it. Mm-hmm. Everything's got to be reported. It's like when pe- like people saying um, the Castleford's bust up in Lanzarote shouldn't have been reported. Of course it should be reported. It's, it is news. You've got to report the good, the bad news with the good news as well. You, you've got to 
It's like that Western, everything. isn't it? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, yeah, you, like everyone, like the, the cheerleader term has come into it. You, you, you can't just uh, report the good stuff. You you have got to be impartial. You've got to report everything. Um, but I'm just thinking, why why has it been released on the eve of the season, the eve of the biggest game in, well, since the grand final, of course. So are you saying it should have been released last week? Uh, yeah. Or it, would you have waited until the game had gone? No, no. <laughs> uh, it should have been released last week. So it, 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 so this week was a new week and it was all about the feel good and it was all about promoting the season, and promoting the old derby, promoting we're going to say it's derby, promoting... Warrington Leeds promoting Huddersfield Salford it should have been focusing on promoting the games I do find it interesting how it takes so long for these to come into oh, yeah. into the that, market that was another, as well that was another thing what it took dating back to 2017 we're in 2019 why has this happened and, and you could also chuck in well you know should there be a more severe punishment because the new owners of Keithley have to put up with a minus 12 point deduction yeah, I know. That, that's another thing. So uh, at least at Wigan, the they've sort of fallen foul of the rules, but they've not changed. Yeah. There's nothing changed, if you know what I mean, really the, behind the scenes, is there? But then all the West World Raiders were deducted two points Yeah. yeah. Uh, for fielding an ineligible player last season. But then the minus two points, they've said, counts last season, not this season. Mm, interesting. Uh, so it's like... I forgot many more uh, comments we're, coming. Well, through we've, we've got sort of, plenty of comments I'm, on that. I want on to the, find out if anybody sort of like <laughs> sides with me on the Zach Hardacre stuff. To be fair, um, uh, Kevin well. Blackburn says, "Why have Wigan only been deducted two points when Salford were deducted six? What was the severity of the Salford one? Was that was they a bit more? I think, I think Salfords were, were quite bad. To be fair, were they it? more yeah, over the salary very cap? Much so, so maybe it's, it's sort yeah. of like. It's on a slide. Because Wigan, Wigan were 180 percent, weren't it? It, it, it totaled up to so 0.8 percent. Right. They were over, and I think Salford's were, were were much more than that. I can't remember the full figures on her as a, as the question comes in. But if you do it, if we do a bit of research. Yeah, I'm sure I we think, could I think, find out, couldn't we? I think you know, looking back. Were a, yeah. A bit I, more. I, um, Jeff Millman <laughs> says, which two teams will make the grand final? Um, I'm tipping Leeds this year. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, not deviating he's, from yeah, that. He's tip Leeds. You've tipped Leeds. You've made the top five, haven't you, as well? Mm -hmm. I, I've, I think me, you and James Gordon have, uh, have tipped Leeds to make the top five. Um, so, pressure on Leeds. <laughs> um, I've, I've tipped Saints. I think it'll be Sintelling's grand final winners. We'll make the grand final then, Dave. You, you're tipping Leeds to win it. It'll, it'll be there to Saints and to Leeds. Compete. Saints and Leeds. Yeah. A Warrington one. It's, it's a difficult one with Warrington, isn't it? You don't you know you don't know what you're going to get. No, you don't. You don't. And I mean, Espe I? especially with the blow to Kevin Brown as well. Well, let's move on to Warrington because I know we said that we talked about him last week, and uh, yeah, that's a huge blow to Warrington's chances. Has anybody mentioned that we've not mentioned Warrington yet? Jeff said it's for the benefits. Brackets free pies. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so that's again on the wig and salary cap issue. Derek agrees with you on Zakar Dave Dave um, agree with Dave Leppard never changes its spots but I, I think everyone deserves a, a chance he's had four yeah he deserves a chance Dave how many more what was saying that when he picks up Man of Steel in 2019 that's my tip for Man listen if he does that then 20 to 1 on Betfred Zach Hardacre Man of Steel if he does that all power to his elbow I like the lad as a player I think he's a top player Bruce. he's a great guy as well when you interview him I've, I've spoke to him a few times I've spoke to him after grand finals and stuff but he's obviously got something in his makeup that makes him act like an idiot Well, he's, he's moved to Wigan as well now hasn't he um, oh pity so him <laughs> You're horrible, you do. <laughs> horrible. Um, so yeah, so he's obviously out of the his home, his homeland. Um, he's away from his previous environment. So it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. It's a big year for Zach, isn't it? Isn't it? It's, there's no question about that. Um, Andrew Hunt, yeah, yeah, exactly. This is this is what we we touched on. Well, read we've it out. Don't just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good comment. We've had uh, two Christmases since the breach was committed. Why does it take so long? It's, it's, it's a it's, great point. It is a great point. Very good point, um, Johnny Wright. But considering we, uh, it's not the first time we're going to have committed these 
this two points isn't enough. Well, yeah, I mean, like I say, they're a serial offender. They're like the the, the Zach Hardacre of rugby league clubs, mm. aren't they? They're a serial offender. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's a tough one on the se severity of it because they're literally just over, just. Um, and that's it's over the, though. But it, it and is they've over. not told anybody that they're over. Yeah. Surely that's where the issue is. Yeah. No, it is, and, that, and that's why they've been, they've been dot points. But I think. Obviously, if there was 15% over or 20% over, then obviously you might be looking at six or eight points or whatever, rather than two. Uh, OK, uh, I'm conscious of time, and I'm realised that we're doing a bit of a slog of these Super League teams. So, uh, Warrington, I sort of mentioned it just before. Um, they've lost Kevin Brown on the eve of the season. That's a big blow for them, isn't it? Huge blow. And I, I feel devastated for him. Um, no, he is one of the decent guys in rugby league, very, isn't he? He is one of the nice blokes. I went, I went to his food place as well in Wigan over there. It's very, very nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bit of free advertising as well, well Kev. I, 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 won't mention, I won't mention it, but we can't do shameless plugs, Dave, all the time. <laughs> we're, we're sponsored by a bet friend, a bet friend only. Uh, <laughs> I'm devastated for him, Dave. Uh, it's, it's so cruel. He's, he's just been through a gruesome couple of months in pre-season and he's got mm. nothing out of it because he, he can't play this year. The sad thing is as well, at the age he's at is it 34 he's at now? 34, 35, yeah he's, he's probably it, not got too it, many it, years it, left at the top level has he? He's in his last year with Warrington and obviously they're getting Gareth Widdop for 2020 from 2020 who will likely partner Blake Austin in the halves. If Blake Austin obviously um, is still there Where's Kevin Brown fit? Because they'll still have Depp Patton. They'll still have Danny Walker on the bench. It's going to be interesting. Mm. I, can't, I don't know how many times I've said it's going to be interesting on this podcast. Eh? It's going to be interesting. But it's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's just heartbreaking. And you don't... It's, you don't want his career to end like this. You, you don't want him to just call his retirement, do you? Knowing, knowing Kevin as the sort of player that he is, though, I mean, he's going to come back from this, isn't he? He's going to be so determined to I go hope he round. goes round again. Because you, can, you can't retire like this, can you? It'd be so sad for him. It would be. It would for be. Because he's had such a good career. He's been, he's been like the star man wherever he's been. Uh, I remember him making his debut as a little skinny centre and winger for, uh, for Wigan. Um... He's been great. He was great at Wigan. He was great at Huddersfield at Widnes. You know, at Warrington. It's it's just heartbreaking. It's like Luke Gale. It's it's heartbreaking because we we want our best best uh, Super League players to be played, and and that's the, the the sad thing about it. It's an occupational hazard, sadly, isn't it? It goes with the territory of uh, you know big physical sport as we've got. Um, I want to sort of just move on just a, a, a tad from that, though, because a lot of people have been talking about Blake Austin. I know he's a guy that you've seen a lot of. Um, the way that he speaks, he's very enthusiastic, mm. he's very measured. He is one of the poster boys of the Super League for this, this coming season. Is he going to be that good? I think he is. I think he is. A <laughs> he's, he's a, an unbelievable player. Yeah, for, for, I thought when he was originally linked with Warrington that... Mm. This ain't gonna happen. This is just a, a throwaway line. This that Austin's linked with Warrington and Super League, and then when it happened, it's 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 a game changer. It's a game changer for Super League because to attract players who were already in the prime in Australia. I mean, he's what 25, isn't yeah. he? I think 25, 26. Yeah, uh, to attract players in the prime to come over and want to play in Super League. Obviously, it would have been about the money. I'm not, and I'm not saying he would have just wanted to come over to Super League. Obviously, it's going to be about the money. But to attract him and to be able to attract him, this is what I like about the marquee rule. You might have different views on, on this to me, Dave, but this is what I like about the marquee rule because you can, you can pay whatever you want for these real star names. Not these like second-rate Aussies who were maybe 32 coming towards back in the career or... And so, and so on. Which has been a hi well, it's been a highlight of uh, uh, many a Super League yeah. yeah. shopping list. Yeah. Them, them type yeah. of players that you just mentioned. Hundred percent, Dave. And uh, it's good that we can have a Maverick as well. He's a re real exciting player. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be a player like Ben Barber, where not just his club's fans will enjoy watching him. Super League will enjoy watching Blake Austin for sure. Do you think that there are there abouts then with the rest of the squad? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it's just uh, 
Is it a mentality thing with Warrington in big games? It's always there, yeah. That's what they've been saying for years. Because they've reached plenty of grand finals. I feel sorry for Chris Hill most. <laughs> How many grand finals has Chris Hill been at? And he's been on the losing side every time. Is it, is it four? Five? It's four, four or five, yeah, you're right. He's, he's been at quite a few and, and it must be gut wrenching. Still got his Northern Rail Cup for, winners medal though when he was at Ling. He does made his debut against St. Helens in 2004 or five. We'll be getting the Elvis music again. It was a good pump in that day, weren't it, Dave? It was, yeah, yeah, 74 now. <laughs> 74, remember it well. But uh, <laughs> I think if you look at the squad as a whole, it's going to be interesting because uh, cause obviously Brown's injury, what do you think they'll do? Do you think they'll throw Patton straight in the halves with Austin or do you reckon they think they'll put Stefan Ratchford in the halves with, with Austin and put Jake Mamo at fullback? I've got, um, I think they'll probably go with the second one, first of all. And Ratchford in and Mamo at back. And keep Patton on the bench. Um, I could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong before. Well, I mean, I, I've always liked Deck Patton. I think that he's yeah, right, he's ready. Yeah. He's rearing to go and he's got a fine he, kicking game as well. Yeah, he probably deserves a chance. I mean, he was playing a bit for Rochdale last season. It was absolutely outstanding every single game that he pulled the Hornet shirt on. Yeah, and uh, you've got Danny Walker as well. So if, yeah, yeah, so, that's an interesting sign. So if, it, if they throw a uh, Deck Patton in the arms with Austin, obviously Danny Walker will go onto the bench. Probably. One of the surprise signings that Warrington made was when they brought Lama Tazi in. Yeah, very, I, I was it's very a bit of a strange one, that. isn't it? Yeah, very I mean, he's a solid player, yeah. don't get me wrong. Yeah, but very surprised because I thought I'm a big fan of uh, Johnson, the youngster. Yeah. The young front rower. Uh, Lewis row. Johnson. Yeah, yeah, Lewis Johnson. He made his debut at, against Wigan last season and he's got. He's got a good burst of pace as well for a, a big lad, so I thought he might get more of a chance this season. He still might do, yeah. Um, but I thought he'd be pushing for a spot on bench, and obviously they've still got the likes of Harvey Levert and Joe Philbin, who uh, who were good in Super League last season. So where did you have Warrington finishing on the final analysis? I think I, had a, I think the if you if you want to check man Dave's and. And James' predictions. Oh, is it online now? Yeah, it's online. Right. It went online at lunchtime. Uh, the, the Love Rugby League Super League 2019 predictions are out now. The championship ones will be going a little bit later on as well. I've put, I think, Sintelians, Warrington, Wigan, Leeds, Castleford, top five, I think. I can't remember who my full top five was, but I do, I do remember it being. But but I felt absolutely horrible at, at not including Wakey because <laughs> I do like Wakey. I do remember and it being St Helens at top. I put um, I put Wigan fourth. I think I put Leeds in third, Warrington Sorry second. Dave. And Sorry, you're Dave. just stretching it out. We've gone. It's me long legs. It's me long legs. It's like being in a room with a giraffe. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm six foot five, nearly six, six, Dave, I can't, I, I can't keep cramped up for too long. And I've to be fair, we are, we are sort of squashed up a little bit on a two-seater couch, we got a bit closer than I thought we would do, actually, <laughs> but. But, but going back to Warrington, I think they've got a sensational team. Yeah. I think, I think if you take that one to 17, you, know, you could have a very, very good uh, second string side, Dave. Okay, so we've done three, there's just two more sides to look at now. And let's go right in with the man jo who's... Johnny Wright says, Brown oh. will be back. His character won't let him finish early. Yeah, I agree with you, Johnny. Have, we, had, have we any other... Get him, get him back up with this, eh? Well... If, if Warrington not wants him, eh? Never mind with this, I'd have him at Lee. What do you want, the Lee? I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Do. I'm only joking. all these young, great St. Helens players coming to Lee this year. Oh no, it's, it's going to be exciting, isn't it? <laughs> it, it will be. Uh, so, um, have we any more comments that people have? Uh, Johnny said, uh, saying that about um, Castleford and, and the salary cap and stuff, it's all news. Can't wait for tonight. The biggest, best, and original derby. Yeah, we were sent. For you, Wigan. We were sent another message saying about the original derby by Lionel Hurst, who's doing his own version of really pushing the game in the uh, in the south, isn't it? Yeah, uh, is it? To, to be fair, it is the original derby, and that's where the, the derby sport comes from. It actually comes from the St. Helens Wigan derby. In all sports, so when you were the Merseyside derby in football, the Manchester derby in football, the derby, the word derby, came from St. Helens v Wigan. And we'll talk a little bit about that again in a, a few minutes' time. Hull. Lee Radford must be the most under-pressure coach in Super League as it stands at the moment. So that's very, what I reckon. It's a very, very tough one, isn't it? With all, I think I'm, I'm in the media tipping comp uh, this year, and um, I think 
near enough everyone has tipped Hull not to finish in the top five. Uh, but this time last year, you were probably tipping him to finish in the top five, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, you were. Um, it's it's a very tough one. They've, I think I tip tip them to finish eighth. I think. I'm not too sure, Dave. They've not strengthened, have they? Really, in the off season. It's almost like they've taken a punt of players from lower division and guys that haven't really worked out. I'm thinking like. Uh, Levy, who was at Salford yeah. last season, they brought Danny Langtree from Big Oldham, fan of Danny Langtree. Good player. But it's, it's obviously it's a massive step up from League One to Super League. Uh, uh, so they've also got one of my favourite players of recent years in there, Matty Dawson Jones, yeah. who yeah. was fantastic at yeah. Lee, to be yeah, honest. He was. Where, do you think you're going to start in spot at FC? Obviously, Talano was out at the moment, so he yeah, you'll probably get in. You'll probably get in early doors, won't you? Yeah. Until Talano was uh, sort of back fit again. Um, I think a big thing, and I, I was chatting to Lee Radford about this at the Super League launch, was the fact that they missed so many of the the front line players for virtually two thirds of the season last year. You look at, uh, uh, um, you know, the the half back pairing, for example, only played together ten times. You know, Sneed was injured for much of it. Yeah, sorry, Dave. I'm just reading the comments. Have we got a but long one? Is someone yeah, we have. Yeah, it's about the derby. We'll come on to it in a, right, in okay. a little while. But uh, to to all Sneed's Sne a big part of it. He's obviously he's back now. Um, so it's whether who's his half back partner going to be? Because obviously See, Albert, I like I like Connor. Albert yeah, Albert Kelly's injured, but obviously yeah, but Connor's ruled out to the old derby. Hmm. So well, that's not going to happen this week. So then. yeah, so who's going to partner him? Uh, Con Connor's definitely an halfback. He's not a centre. Mm. He's not. He's he's too. He's got he's got too much that Maverick style of play to be a centre. I think the good, def definitely the an good half. thing about him though is that he can cover a multitude of positions as well. In take with Connor because I mean you could put him at fullback and he'd do your job. You could. I know when he was coming through, he was on the wing at Huddersfield, wasn't he? Then he was in the centres. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I can't think who's going to be that half back partner. I'm not sure. I don't think Liam Harris is in the squad, is he? Hmm. He's not being put out back to dual reg at could Doncaster. Do, is could he? Danny Washbrook do a job in <laughs> Something like that. I don't, uh, to be fair, I mean, Washbrook has, has, I think he's covered standoff on one or two occasions. Yeah, uh, who knows? Who he's knows, more though? like your old fashioned at least forward, like you always had a pair Oh, before. he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, wow, I can old fashioned loose forward. Those were the days, eh? Um, so, where, where are you tipping on finish? I say eight. I put them. Um, Round about there, I think, didn't I? I think we were eighth or ninth, something like that. Just above Hull Kingston Rovers. Yeah, just above Hull KR for me as well. Mm. It's, uh, gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting, interesting, interesting I, <laughs> season for, I see it, for the black and white. I do seriously hope though that Lee Radford is able to beat his boo boys and to get them on a, a winning run because he he's a top bloke as well. Oh, he is. He is. He's fantastic to speak to, and he's it? so passionate about the club. And he was telling us the story about when he made his debut as a 16-year-old as well, which was quite interesting. So that'll be coming up in a few weeks' time on uh, Love Rugby League or on one of the channels. Could be a podcast. Who knows? We've got it. Who knows? Just go on loverugbyleague.com or the final one. It's all Love Rugby League weekly. Exactly. And it'll be somewhere on there. Um, London Broncos. They're everybody's tip for finishing bottom. I saw them at the weekend take on The mind tip to finish bottom as well. <laughs> I I've, I have put them bottom. <laughs> um, it's gonna it's gonna be a long long rocky road in it for for the Broncos. I like London Broncos. I love the job that Danny Ward is doing there. Yeah, so um, do I. He's got some guys there that are having the first taste of Super League. Some guys who are in for a second time, lads like yeah. Kieran Dixon. Um, I was chatting to Eddie Batty after last weekend, and uh, he can't wait to get started. He's just really pleased that preseason's over with now. Yeah, it's. I just can't see it being anything but a grueling season for him. I, I, re I, I hope they prove me wrong. Honestly, I hope they prove me wrong because I'm a big fan of Danny Ward and I'm a big fan of what they did last season. I loved it how, they, how they're trying to get the local talent involved. A lot of players at London have hail from the South. So that's a, a big positive because obviously we've seen beforehand where it's, it's just Yorkshiremen and Lancastrians going up to 
up to a uh, couple of Cumbrians oh, in there to, as well, down eh? To, down to London, um, uh, or Australians and stuff. But it, it, the, the majority of the team seems to be London based, so it's it, that that's another thing. Because obviously, if you want to, the sports to go down, so you've got to get the the players involved, and mm-hmm. and that's what they have done. Big fan of the of, uh, of Bat Row with Dan Marsh. He's a, a very solid player. Jamaica international. Is he going to get in a lot? He's, as he's, well he's only got a squad number of something like mid twenties, and he didn't yeah. play at Lee because J- they they, yeah. they went with Jay Pitts and Matty G. Yeah, he, he's a good player though. I like Iron Mash. Yeah, 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 I like what I've seen of him. Tell you who is good, uh, Sadiq. Adibai. Yeah, Sadiq Adibai. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he, he's he scored a real tank, power pack he? try. Yeah. Yeah, he's a tank. Yeah, it, but. I have been a little bit disappointed with the with the recruitment of London this but, season. But maybe it's all they can afford. Maybe it is. But I'm still being disappointed with it, Dave. I, I'm I, expect, I expect him more. Ryan Morgan from Saints, good signing. Luke Yates from NRL, 25, 26 games under his belt for Newcastle. Had a good game at the weekend against Lane. Yeah. He's it, not the biggest of forwards, but I'll tell you what, the, he runs the, above his weight. The probably the two signings that stand out. Obviously, Jordan Abdul coming from Hull. It's a big season for him, I think. He's got a, he's got yeah. a point to prove, I think, Jordan I, Abdul. I'd agree, because I think he's more your bat row type yeah. player than a, than, than a pivot. I, well, I think he's a traditional foot team. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag <laughs> hashtag <laughs> traditional thirteen. I'm gonna, gonna we're gonna get that trending. Yeah, I'm gonna um, get that trending this season. In fact, I think you should have a T-shirt made with hashtag traditional thirteen on there. What do you reckon? I'll get an you hashtag saying some. saying it will be interesting. Hashtag it'll be interesting. Hashtag new beginnings. <laughs> hashtag enjoy the game. Um, hashtag so new era. I ain't got how many more hashtags are you gonna stick in there? Hashtag every minute matters. Hashtag. Have you finished? What else? You can't think different of league. What was that one? Dif- it's a different league. It's a different league. Uh, right, we're going to move on to terrible tipsters. So this is a, a new thing. We're, we're just running it as a trial this week, and no, hopefully. Dave, we're over an hour, aren't we? That's all right. Don't worry. Well, we've only got that to go through. I need to set off Saint to Saint soon to totally wicked stadium. It's not that bad outside. Don't worry. You'll just be sliding down the road. Don't worry about it. Uh, terrible tipsters. You said you've already joined the tipping competition. We're going to be having I our have. own here on Love Rugby League Weekly. Yep. Where the idea is that um, we go through the fixture list and we just say who we think is going to win that game. Uh, but what I will probably need to do from next week is to write the answers down. So I'll have to review this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Saints v Wigan. Wigan. I've gone Saints. By four. I'm not, we're not doing by All right, gaps. Go on. Okay. That's, that's going to be too... <laughs> All right, that's then. too cumbersome, that. Well, are, we, are we having some prize at the end of the season, then? What? Um, yeah, pack of Milky Ways. What do you reckon? Yeah. Bovril? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pack of Bovril. <laughs> Just the one. One cup. Uh, Friday night. Cass against Catalans. Cass. I've gone Cass. Huddersfield against Catalans Salford. Catalans always start the season slow, don't they? Mm, they might not do, though, with the new well, signings. Not, but I've still yeah, gone with yeah. Catalans, anyway. Yeah. Um, Huddersfield against Salford. Huddersfield. I've gone Salford. Mm. Tipping the uh, the Devils for an upset there. Uh, Hull Kingston Rovers against Hull. Okay. I've gone Hull. Warrington v Leeds, the game that's taking place on Saturday. Warrington. I've gone Leeds. You're expecting big things, things from Leeds? I am right? expecting yeah. big things from Leeds, yeah. I've got massive expectations of them. Just like I'm sure 14,000 people at Edinburgh will <laughs> have as well, to be fair. In the Championship, uh, Batley against Barrow. Mmm, toughy. Batley. All my advantage. I've gone Batley as well. Bradford against Featherstone. Bradford. Bradford I've gone with as well. Lee against Toulouse. Toulouse, but that'll be a close game. I've gone Toulouse as well. Rochdale against Dewsbury. Rochdale. Dewsbury. Sheffield against Swinton. Sheffield. Sheffield. Witness against Halifax. Witness. I'm tipping Halifax in that one. Ooh. So we, we've gone quite different there. We have gone, yeah, yeah. And just one more. 
York against Toronto. Toronto. I've got Toronto as well. Well, it's like that, isn't it? You know, you they look at the champion chem- Toronto quite a lot this season. Possibly, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll we'll have a look and see how we both did last uh, next week when we we sit down. Where hopefully we'll get James involved, and also we'd love your tips as well. Fred says to lose. And That's more. you sleeping in the shed tonight, Dave. Uh, it won't be the first time. <laughs> Make sure that heat is on in here tonight, Dave. <laughs> My voice is going as well now. We've been on an hour. Um, any other comments? You said there was one about the Derby. <laughs> yeah, Dave, David Hill said the Derby is the name of a premier horse race uh, in England. The contest was founded by the 12th Earl of Derby in 1780. Since at least as early as 1840, Derby has been used as a noun in English to denote any kind of sporting contest. A local Derby is just a sporting contest between local rivals. Fair enough. We are educated. But the Earl of Derby... Um, he went watching a Saints and Wigan game, didn't he? Yeah. Was that where that come from? Oh, very, 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 very long time ago. I forget the year, to be precise. But he did. Sounds like that uh, could be a... That's what the, the like Pride could, of Derby was after. That could be a piece on uh, on, on Love Rugby League, that. Could. The history of the original Derby. Uh, right, that's just about us done and dusted for this week. Thank Rugby you very much for joining us. Derby, sure. Oh, Whoa. so yeah, I missed that one. Um, I best go and send him out on his ear, then he can get to St. Helens tonight. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you again uh, for Bet Fred for sponsoring us for the season. Um, check out Love Rugby League and everything, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And whoever you support this weekend, go and enjoy the game. <laughs>